So one of the problems I have with this 2021 Chevy Colorado ZR2 is when I purchased it, I didn't realize that the truck does not come with fog lights. I'm pushing 49 years old. My eyes aren't as good as they used to. And so I do a lot of trail running and adventuring out in the wilds and I leave early in the morning. And uh, what I find is if I'm driving in the dark or in inclement weather, off road, off the highway, things get really, really dicey for me uh, as far as seeing things. So I want to add some lights to this truck to make it a little bit safer for driving. So I've added the Baja Design uh, ditch lights and then I also went ahead and I put in some uh, LED headlights uh, replacing the old school headlights that came with this truck. So in this video, uh, in order to hook up those ditch lights, I needed some type of switch inside the cab of my truck. So I installed the S-Pod six switch uh, panel and then I wanted to make it look all good and tight and clean in the cab of the truck. So I got the S-Tech off-road switch panel that can hold the S-Pod and that's what this video is going to be about and I also go into putting the S-Pod into the engine bay, how I did all that. It's just kind of an instructional video. I couldn't find anything on YouTube uh, doing this whole entire project. So hopefully if you want to do this project, you can learn from some of the mistakes uh, that I did. But let's get into the video and the install. And then at the end of this, I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll give you some lessons learned what I would do differently uh, if I was to do this again. First, remove the positive and negative cables on the S-Pod. It takes a 10 millimeter socket. Now remove the four base plate screws on the S-Pod. This is a rubber gasket that you want to use on the power tray for the S-Pod. Now take the four screws that came with the power tray and you're going to install those into the actual S-Pod device. Put the rubber gasket onto the S-Pod and then line it up on the power tray. Secure it to the power tray by screwing in the four screws on the four corners. Now reinsert through those slots the positive and the negative power cables and reattach using the 10 millimeter socket. Take the ethernet cable for the S-Pod and slide it up through and snap it into oh, the S-Pod. This was a little oh, difficult for me. I had to kind of bend the cable to get it in to snap. Oh, I heard a click. Put the metal cover on the S-Pod and hand tight screw. Take a 7 millimeter socket and remove that bolt. And you're going to pull that plastic fairing up. And up underneath there, if you can see, that other bolt right there, that's a 10 millimeter socket. You're going to have to remove that. This is towards the front of the truck. That's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt also and then go ahead and remove that. These are going to be the two attachment points for the S-Pod power tray. So this is towards the front of the truck. You're going to put the bolt back in and this is underneath that plastic fairing. If you can see here uh, the S-Pod, I'm sorry the power tray is in there. You're going to put a bolt back in there. I just couldn't film it because it was such a tight area. So uh, reattach those two bolts after the power tray has been installed and put that little seven millimeter socket back where you found it. And this is what it should look like when it's installed. So it has two attachment points. Up next is putting the ethernet cable from the engine bay into the actual driver's compartment. So I attached the ethernet cable to this little plastic thing and I got a, a fillet knife for fishing and I cut a hole right there in that little rubber grommet on the driver's side. And then I was able to get my big hands up through there and I fished it through. As you can see here, I, I fished the ethernet cable through the side of the truck and this is what it looks like. Now 
remove the two side panels of the console and this was pretty easy uh, there's these attachment points right here where you can see me uh, you just basically get underneath and you pull with your hand at those attachment points and from the top and it should pop out pretty easily up next is a real problem it's getting this thing out maybe you have some better pry tools but uh, this is the uh, switch panel with uh, all your stuff for four-wheel drive rockers etc and you gotta get underneath there and this took me a long long time i wanted to be patient and you gotta come in from the sides here and slowly pop it off and this is what it looks like you're gonna have these little power cords uh, underneath and uh, you gotta disconnect everything i took photos uh, so i can remember what things looked like uh, and up next you find a seven millimeter socket here uh, you're going to come in you're going to remove this little screw right here with a seven millimeter socket and be sure to save that put it in a ziploc bag or somewhere safe time to pop off this little plastic piece right here and that's what that's going to look like that was pretty easy that's a cigarette lighter and the usb uh, connector the cigarette lighter was the bane of my existence this was the hardest thing in this whole entire project was figuring out how to remove this cigarette lighter uh, it was very very difficult and i'm going to show you how i did it i'll come back to the cigarette lighter up next is to remove the plugs for the usb part of this panel and so this was difficult too i didn't want to break anything so i really took my time and slowly worked these plugs out be patient be very patient uh, once you get the plugs out this thing will pop out pretty easily there as you can see uh, you got these little clips on the side here that's what you gotta depress to get that piece to come out of the panel without breaking so here's a cigarette lighter uh, i got some tool online uh, that's supposedly to remove the cigarette lighters and it did not work it, it was a failure probably took me like an hour and a half to figure this stuff out i finally get it out as you can see here and what i did is i had to be very very careful and i pried on these two points there's these little hinges these little clips and i basically bent the plastic there and i was able to remove the cigarette lighter and uh, also take the cigarette lighter cover off there also well, that was easy full face panel into the console. So there's a little white frame that is going to be used for drilling the four holes to attach the panel into the console. And I just used painter's tape to secure it there. Now I took the USB uh, port that came out of the truck and I put it into the s tech panel. It's pretty easy. Just lines up and snaps in there. Up next was to put the cigarette 12 volt lighter cap into the panel and it was pretty difficult. I was having a lot of problems here. So I needed to get a razor blade and go through and cut that hole. There was like a little bit of the plastic on there so I had to cut the hole so the lighter cap, 12 volt cap could pop into it. And this is going to process uh, that you're going to do throughout this project going forward for the other parts of the full face panel you'll see here in a bit. Now it's time to take the 12 volt uh, lighter that you got out of the truck and place it into the panel. And there's, I'm trying to illustrate that there's a couple notches that you got to line up in there. Look at those notches and then that should slide in there pretty easily. Now it's time for the S-Pod control panel to go into the face panel. And this is a problem you're going to see here. I couldn't fit it in there, so I was going to have to remove plastic in the inlay of that face panel. And I actually had to get a little Dremel tool and just go through. Uh, there was quite a bit of plastic I had to grind off in order to make that S-Pod instrument panel fit inside of it. Keep that Dremel tool out because you're going to need it to fit uh, a drill bit into the actual frame for drilling the four holes. And up next is going to be
be reconnecting all the cables and the ethernet into the S-Pod uh, instrument panel. Make sure everything clicks and snaps and you can actually hear that it's a secure fit. Fish that ethernet cable, any slack in it, uh, down through the uh, console. Now I did. All right, so I learned that you're gonna have to take a drill bit on those four holes for the uh, panel to screw into, and you gotta drill it from the other side to make sure that it's a clear hole so the screws can get through. Make sure that those little cables that you see there are actually hanging out in front of the uh, S-Pod instrument panel. Here I'm trying to illustrate that you can see the four holes and inside there is like a little brass uh, fitting and that's the actual S-Tech panel and so it takes a little tiny Allen wrench and you're going to have to go in there and screw these in. Now I learned that you want to screw them in uh, opposite sides and not tighten them all because you want a little bit of a wiggle room. Uh, so you can line all the holes up before securing it tightly. Okay, now take that S-Pod red cable and attach it to the battery right there, right on that post. And then you take the black cable from the S-Pod and you attach it to the ground chassis. There it says ground. I took a steel wool and I kind of cleaned that up so it was bare metal also. So here's the thing that I would do is before you go ahead and install the S-Tech and S-Pod panel back into the main console of the truck, make sure that the S-Pod switch is working. I had a problem with it. I don't know what the problem was. I, I basically had to remove everything, make sure all the connections were together, and then basically put it all back together and then it started working. So it was probably user error on my part. The other thing is make sure you have some kind of volt meter. Uh, I had to borrow one from my, uh, my neighbor. I didn't have that. Uh, if I had that from the beginning, probably that uh, mistake that I made about it not working, I probably could have diagnosed it much better. Those are the things that I would do differently uh, is basically make sure the thing is working prior to putting everything back in and tighten everything up. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something. So thanks a lot for watching. If you got any questions, put it in the comments and thanks a lot. And don't forget to get out there and escape the matrix.